creating a, a good culture of creativity is, is just being open, honest, and, and just sharing the greater picture about what we're trying to achieve. Mm. And then just staying on course and, and having a strategy, having a plan, having like a process that you can lean back on and, and sort of regroup and go, well, this is what we're trying to achieve. And those ideas, you know, some of those ideas are on, on strategy. Yeah. Some of those are not right for this, but they're good ideas. They're just not right for this sort of thing. Welcome to the Will's Eye podcast. My name is Will Phillips and in this series, we help businesses and creatives understand each other better in order to form stronger collaborations that result in more effective advertising campaigns. Now, for those of you who don't know what Will's Eye is and what we do, we are a creative agency that niches in film production in order to help brands communicate more effectively in the digital world. Now, today I have with me on my left, my left, yes, <laughs> Dan Rowell of DSR Branding. Hey, Dan. Hey, mate. How are you going? <laughs> good, good. Thanks Thank, for having me. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. Um, now, we, as usual in these episodes, have a lot to unpack, um, but I think it would be good to start. I'd like to share the story of how we met, actually. I, mm -hmm. I didn't say I was going to say this, but I will share that in a bit. But also, um, I guess, tell me a bit about you and DSR and where it all began. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, excited to be here. So um, I run a branding agency uh, called DSR Branding. Uh, we've been going for seven years and we specialise in rebrands. So we say we like to transform underdogs into top dogs. Um, I've seen that on the website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the idea with that is like, what is an underdog? Uh, an underdog is a great business who looks... I guess a great business who doesn't look as good as they actually are. So, um, you know, we all know a, we all know of those businesses, the ones that, you know, it might be the Chinese takeaway around the corner that, hey, like the food's amazing, but it looks, you know, it looks shithouse. Yeah. Um, but you have to go there and try it and, and, and the, the locals know. Um, it tastes great. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, but that extends to, to really great businesses who have gone for years for like flying beneath the radar um, and then they get to a stage where they're losing opportunities they're losing out to shinier or glossier competitors mm -hmm. um, and then they seek someone like us to to go in there and sort of refresh uh re-articulate their value proposition and then bring that to life through really compelling design um awesome yeah so so we do we do branding brand strategy um brand identity uh and then we do things like graphic design um and web development web design um, so cool. we've been going for seven years. I started the business um, in 2015 after doing a solid five-year stint in a creative agency. Right. Um, I was yeah. going to ask you about what was life like before, yeah, yeah. but we can unpack that. Yeah, away. yeah. yeah. I, was, uh, I actually had a funny story, like, funny story about how I got into that job. So I was, bu I was buying um, booze for my 21st at Vintage Cellars over in um, <laughs> St. Lucia. There's and always a story like this, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, I knew the um, – my, my brother's friend was the manager. That's why I was going there to buy the alcohol because I was getting a bit of a discount. Um, and I had this trolley full of booze and, and he introduced me to this guy who was at the store called Jeff. And Jeff was the director of a creative agency. Right. Um, and there was, a, there was a real big group of these different directors as part of this agency. Mal Meninga was one of them. Uh, it was a real what? motley crew. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of... Um, the, and then I went and interviewed with the CEO, a uh, guy called Kozlu Chitty, um, who was a great, great friend and mentor. Um, um, or has become. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I came on there as an intern, my first, um, a, and be then became their first full-time employee. Um, and then uh, Com One or Communicator One grew from one or two employees to, to nine um, and working with different brands like Lorna Jane, Better Electrical, um, Brisbane Heat, uh, wow. The Coffee Club. Yeah, we worked with some really cool big national brands. Yeah. Um, and and it, for me, it was, I mean, it's awesome experience. Like I think when you're young, to get thrown into the deep end and work in like a full service um, space where you get to try a lot of different things, you know, go from writing, one day writing like a retail campaign, like a 15 second TVC, mm. to the next day thinking about how do we launch a new sports team, um, yeah. like Brisbane Heat. Um, so it was awesome to, to get that breadth of experience. But what I realized after doing five years there is that like we were just, you know, we were, we were a great generalist agency mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be a generalist. I wanted to be a specialist or, you know, a really an expert in, in a particular space. Um, and what I found is I really liked, uh, working directly with founders and business owners. Yeah. Um, 
And so working very closely with them on branding. Um, it sort of got to the stage where I could go to another agency or I could just have a crack and, and yeah, try to do it myself. And that was sort of the beginnings of uh, DSR branding. Wow, okay. And so was there any hesitancy like when you sort of left Com- Coms 1, was it? Com-, Com 1, yeah. Com 1, yeah. So when you left Com 1, was there any hesitancy to be like, oh, maybe I, I should jump back into a job, you know? Uh, well, I was very fortunate. So I left I, I left with nothing except one foundation client, so a really good friend of mine, um, a guy called Simon Harridans. We did a, a brand together when I was at Com 1, so we did a, a grass-fed beef company oh, um, with him and, his, him, and, him and his wife. It was a real paddock to plate thing called Young Farmers, it was really cool. Um, and then he was starting, he was leaving an investment management firm and he was starting a, his own investment management firm. Mm. And he said, you know, he, he sort of gave me a tap saying like, you know, this is what I want to do. And I, I sort of said, yeah, I want to I wanna leave and, and start my own thing. So I knew I had one project um, and it was about really nailing that project. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I really appreciate the chance that he, he took as well. Um, but then I also fell into a consulting role. Um, so a friend of mine, um, uh, had a, a brand automation platform called Outfit, and they're actually quite massive now. Mm. Um, I feel know, like I've heard of them. They're yeah. they're in multi states and 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 you know international. Um, they got a really big team, but I, I went on there two days a week as a consultant doing brand strategy. Wow! Um, and that was really good. It gave me a sort of like a, a really good base to work with, and 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 the confidence to sort of grow DSR branding. But what it also does is when you're torn between two different roles, you know, running your own business and then doing like a consulting role, mm. um, you're wearing multiple hats and you're trying to do multiple things. Yeah. And if anything, it probably slows down the it's probably slowed down the growth of DSR at the start because I was, you know, two days a week in another business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, while, while it was great for cash flow and, and having that security, um, I do think it probably it would have impacted the the I guess the acceleration of, of my business. And th- and that makes sense too, because I, 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 I know a lot of um, a lot of founders, especially when they're not capital funded, mm. are doing retainer based or like being in somewhere else a couple of days a week just to sort of pay the bills while they're building yeah the vision right yeah yeah and it's not a bad thing like looking back I actually think um, there's something in having that like war chest or that like that safety net. Um, and yeah. it allows you to say no a lot more. Like yes. in my in my first few years, and I think any business owner does this, is like every dollar is a good dollar. Like any client's a good client and you just take on all these different businesses mm. and then you start to work out that, hey, that's not true. Like you've, you sort of, like the, a really powerful word, word in business is no and, mm. and knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at and mm. actually turning away work that you're not well suited to. And unfortunately, in the first few years, you just don't know that. So yeah. you just try it out and, and you try to sort of do a little bit of everything. And while we were doing branding, we were doing branding for, you know, um, it could be a, like a naturopath who's starting up. It could be a, a wellness coach. It could be a, you know, transport company. It could be investment management. Like it was such a wide breadth of different people. Mm. Um, and what I realised over the years is that startup founders, so people who are doing a startup business, who aren't you know capital funded? They're they're quite a challenging customer because they don't know their business well enough yet. Yes. Um, so <laughs> when you know, and and our process is really well suited to existing businesses where mm. we, we can go in and we can do an audit and we can do a real deep discovery and we can learn about their customers and we can learn about their business and we can take them on a journey where we unpack the things that work and the things that don't work, and then start to build a plan around what their new strategy and new vision is yeah. or what they're you know re-articulating that vision and then bringing it to life so um i've start, started to really say no to to startups um you know uh, pending a few you know very very different conditions um but mm. typically now like startups for us i think are better suited to a smaller team um even like a freelance designer where they can start to build things and then iterate and, and sort of tweak and, and do things on the fly as yeah. opposed to investing a lot in branding, getting something and then expecting that to be the saviour, whereas like yes. their product or service needs to be the things that carries them. Yes. Like you can bootstrap stuff, you can go online, you can go on Fiverr um, and get something that looks good enough, like presentable enough to actually road test your business idea and actually get sort of traction. Mm. And then after a few years, then you can actually reevaluate and go, okay, do we need to invest in you know proper um, brand strategy, brand identity, and really like craft this uh, these visuals. Yeah, well, it's it's really interesting because 
that is the exact same and arguably the same with every format of creative and advertising, like with video, with arts and, and content uh, in general, um, you know, higher level or lower level, um, it, it, in a lot of cases, isn't going to be the saviour because there's generally a bigger problem that mm. might require a multifaceted approach, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> and if, you know, and it, it, you're a niche, you're in a niche field as well. So it's interesting to see, do, do you find yourself for bigger companies collaborating with other niche individuals or yeah or we do like we, yeah definitely so we've got a mutual friend ash dighton who's a, who's a great copywriter no, ash. <laughs> <laughs> um and so i mean what what i'm really clear with clients now is like what we do and what we don't do yeah um and just be really upfront like they're um, some agencies like to protect the client from that and go, oh, you know, like it's us and you know, we'll, we'll just make fucking shit happen behind the scenes I and don't worry. That. And it's like... Very traditional. Like, yeah, it? yeah. Like, it's just yeah. like, it's like we're at one, one point of contact and we manage everything behind. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't really shy away from that. Like we, we sort of embrace the fact that we're a four person team at this stage and, mm. and, and let, let the designers and, and let the clients sort of interact. And I think you get great, you get a great output by putting people together and, and actually like letting letting our designers you know um be involved at the start mm. um and then yeah we, we we would collaborate with digital agencies or or like you know if there's a digital like agencies doing like digital marketing or if it's copywriters or if it's film production like always always happy to collaborate because you know we're, we're only a small team we can only control a, a number of different things we mm. want to focus really purely on the brand and, and the design and then, you know, web design and things like that. Um, but outside of that, like, I don't, I don't want to manage all these other projects that, <laughs> that I'm not an expert in. And, and looking back at, like, the biggest mistakes I've made uh, as a business owner, and probably, like, this goes back to, to the Com One days, is where we took on things that we weren't really an expert in. Yeah. We, didn't have, we didn't have real competency in. And you're like, yeah, it's just like, it's, you know, I, it's, it's kind of like we, we have this – concept of like i'll fake it till you make it but like when people are spending real money like um they expect real results and, yeah. and they're like if you're not if you're not great at doing that like you you got to probably be pretty upfront and just say hey to be honest like we're not the right person to do that component mm. uh but we know the right people to do and that's that's where i'm like i've always been really um i don't know i've always been really into like good collaborations with good freelancers like find find a network of good people mm. um and and just work really like collaboratively w with them um, and be really open with like what what the goals of the project are, what the expectations are, um, what the timelines are, what the budgets are. Like just be really open, honest, um, and 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 share that information, and then give them access to the client as well. Like yeah, um, you know, I think I think the clients respond better when they're hearing something firsthand from another expert, as opposed mm. to me trying to like translate it or you know like um, take that on board and then like repurpose it into my own my own words or something like that so yeah i don't know i was about to say it's interesting because you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of people specifically agencies who have such a a opposite i guess an opposite approach uh because they're thinking in their head of the traditional ways where oh i can't I can't let that freelancer or that person be front with the client because they'll steal them mm. or, you know, there'll be some undercutting deals. But I, this is speaking from purely my uh, perspective, I haven't seen that happen yeah. ever. No, I think, well, you've got to work out, like, what value are you adding? And, and the client's going to, like, it's only a band-aid solution. If you start to, like, try to gatekeep and protect your client from other people, like, yeah. it's only a matter of time. If you're not adding any value, it's only a matter of time before they find those people directly. It shows, like, yeah. Like. yeah <laughs> it's not fucking hard to find, like, good people. Like, you know, it's... it's and, and that's the thing with, with, with specialists or niching or freelancers. Like, you know, if you're, if you're a, a... If you're a client who does food or, mm. you know, if you had a, a really high-end restaurant and you wanted a food photographer, mm. like you're not going to go out and look at any photography. You're going to like type in food photography and you're going to have like a number of food stylists and you're going to want to work with one of them directly. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's very easy to find, I think now, uh, find like pretty good people or specialists in, in what you're after. Mm. Um, you know, you could browse through Instagram, you could browse through like Pinterest, you could browse, if for designers, you could browse through like Behance or like Dribble. Behance is amazing. Yeah. So mm. so there's there's so many different channels and and avenues to find people um, 
that that really like clients like client it's like it's a pretty open market so mm, the idea mm. that you can sort of protect people from that and it's like why why bother like why take that stress on why not um why not let people talk directly and and yeah and then you'll be seen as that person who introduced and, and made that connection like it's yeah there's there's yeah. positive benefits from that anyway 100 percent, 100 percent. i feel like I, I, I'm, I'm, we've gone way off. <laughs> that's topic, right. But that's, we, can, we, can, we can get back on course if you like. It's, but. On, it's definitely on topic though in general. <clears throat> um, I guess because that sort of answers the question of experience in managing creative teams and breeding mm. good culture. I guess uh, in, internally with DSR, is there <clears throat> something that you guys do that's a bit left field or a bit different to breed great culture? Like, is there... I think you guys are very um, close, right? So like, we, we do this thing where we greet each other with handshakes every morning. Uh, when, <laughs> when we... Um, and it's not like a formal, like, you know, but, but it is. There you go, it, boys. It, 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 is, it, is a, it is a thing where, like, we've, we've done it. And for every designer, it's not just guys. Like, we've had, we've had you know, we've got female designers um, and we do it with everyone. And, and you know, interns... Everyone, but it's it's just yeah, right. a matter of like when we when we see each other in the morning, it's just like a hey, how you going? Like, and and seeing each other. Um, so just like a not like like hey, yeah, just, just like hey mate, how you going? Yeah, yeah go and then okay. and then when we leave, we do the same thing, and it's just a matter of of like yeah, right. this idea of like greeting each other, like a like an actual greeting. I actually saw something years ago, and it's probably topical now because of Manly. But Manly Rugby League years ago, when they won the premiership, that was one of the things they did. And it wasn't like I was really into rugby league or anything like that. But I just thought yeah. it was a funny coincidence. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, but yeah, it's just like one thing is just like really acknowledging each other um, and and sort of greeting each other as as one thing. We we do things like we'll you know we'll get coffee together, we'll get lunch together. So like I'll I'll go out with the team most days for lunch. Yeah, nice. Um, nice. You know, we were over in Spring Hill, so we'd walk down to the city. So it's more about like creating creating really good relationships, really open communication. And and there's this idea of um, Simon Sinek talks about in one of his books, Leaders Eat Last, um, mm. of creating this like circle of safety. Um, and I think it's really important for creative environments is the idea that, you know, it's not the case of like no idea is a bad idea, mm. but like because there are shit ideas, yeah. um, <laughs> but but like you want to foster a culture of like let's share ideas, and you don't have to have to shit down on someone's idea, but it's mm. more about mm. of like like let's come up with ideas, let's come up with like, let's brainstorm, let's create an environment where people feel comfortable to share their thoughts and their their feelings and and present their work and 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 stand behind their work, yeah. and then let's talk about well you know, constructive feedback or not criticism, but just constructive feedback of like, this is right, this is wrong, this is on strategy, this isn't. And by getting everyone involved very clearly and early on and sharing that vision, mm. um, I think, and, and building trust and building, you know, really strong like friendships and relationships um, and just, just like, you know, a good like healthy um, fun sort of culture where, where you just have a good time and you enjoy working with each other. Mm. Um, and, I mean, it starts at hiring. Like, you, you've got to hire the right people. 100%. Um, and then it also starts – it also matters about client hiring. So, yes. you know, we're, we're, we're very um, – we're very clear on who we work with and who we don't work with. Mm. Um, and if there are sort of red flags, you know, not, not every client is a good client. And mm. just like we're not right for every business mm. – um, but we're fortunate in a space where we can say no to work that we don't think is going to be well suited. And, yes. and that for me is like, I want to go to work and, and be excited about being there. Yeah. Um, and You'd want to if you founded your own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I've come from a place where you would open your emails and you'd be like, fuck yeah. that person. And it's just like that dread of like that client who, who emails or, or says something you're like, oh, I've got to deal with that. And it's like, well, why, why bring that? Like when it's our choice mm. of, of who we work with, like why bring that in? Like let's, mm. let's remove that element. Um, and it's just being open with, with businesses early on. And, and, you know, I think you sort of attract people who are similar to, to your style and, and your culture anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah I think, I think for, for me, creating a, a good culture of, of creativity is, is just being open, honest, and, and, and just sharing the greater picture of what we're trying to achieve. Mm, um, mm. And then just staying on course and, and having a strategy, having a plan, having like a process that you can lean back on um, and, and sort of regroup and go, well, this is what we're trying to achieve. And those ideas, you know, some of those ideas are on, on strategy. Yeah. Some of those are not right for this, but they're good ideas. They're just not right for this sort of thing. Yeah. And, then, and then you sort of... And, and practicing doing that. So like our designers are... 
Our designers are awesome in terms of they will spend a lot of time off screen sketching, uh, drawing. Um, yeah, right. They'll be invi- involved from like coming up with concepts and in, in workshops and, and brainstorming. Um, we're, we're not an agency, we're, we're not a studio where you'll sit behind your desk um, seven hours a day and, and just sort of work at the grind, nose to the grindstone sort of thing. Yeah. Because you're not going to get great results from that. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> like focusing on delivery is not necessarily cre- more like the most creative practice to do. So yeah. having time to actually be in your thoughts and sketch and yeah, like yeah. That, I imagine would be really good. Yeah, I, gotta, I mean, one of our, our lead designer, Ruben, um, is, is super, super hands-on. And I remember one time I came into the agency and I, would, I came in at like probably 9, 9.30 and he's sitting there and he's, he's folding paper and he's, he's building like paper mache sort of tower. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. And, and he's like sitting there and he's folding. And I'm like, all oh, right, that's, you know, it's a bit odd, but whatever. Like, yeah. that's awesome. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a method there. Anyway, like... An hour later, and he's still sort of like folding this towel like really intricately. I'm like, fuck, man, like who's paying for this? <laughs> I'm like, we don't, we don't have a project. We were doing that anyway. Like, I'm like, yeah, l- let it be, let it be. And then, like, a year later, we presented a brand, um, and it was this like uh, geometric grid, like modular grid system, and all these logos were built on this grid, and it was like this hexagon. It was really, really cool, really intricate. Wow. And it was almost like a nod back to this thing that he was working hands-on, uh, paper folding yeah. from like a year ago. And it was like this awesome, awesome identity. Wow. And, and it was it, like, you can see there's a thread that sort of joins through there, and it's that time to have fun and explore and play. But it, it takes, it ta- you know, it takes like, I'm pretty traditional sometimes where, you know, like, I do feel like, oh, you know, time at the desk sometimes. Like, it's, gotta, it's hard to break those old habits. 100%. Um, yeah. But you do have to, if you want great work, mm. like you do have to let people just explore and have fun mm. and, and get outside and get away from their desk and actually do stuff. Yeah. Um, you yeah. can't expect it all to happen just staring at the screen. Yeah, totally agree. A couple of points I want to unpack there too. So, the firstly, talking about, um, you know, being obviously the hiring of staff being as important as the taking on of clients, right? Yeah. So we, obviously we more recently, I would say, have really knuckled down on that um, after because I've stepped away and sort of gone, well, who want who makes me want to get up in the morning and really enjoy, you know, what we do here? Yeah. Um, and, you know, looking at our five, ten year goal, like mm. – do they really align? And it's sort of something I think we t- I talked about in a, a previous episode with Jeremy because uh, it sounds like it's just the classic agency kind of thing, right, that everyone thinks about it. But, um, yeah, it's really interesting once you step away from that and having being in the privileged position to walk away mm. from deals when yeah. it's not a good – yeah, it's it's good. I think there's a, there's a good test I, I – I think I heard it on one of Blair Ends' podcast who we, you know, we, we both listened to. <laughs> I didn't but, um, know he had one yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We so phone, Blair Ends yeah. and, and David C. Baker have a podcast called Two Bobs. So Lovely. highly recommend it. Two um, Bobs, is it? Two Bobs, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, number two Bobs. Cool. Um, and they have a test they call the road test, the road trip test. And the idea is that, you know, if you were stuck in a car with two, for two hours on a road trip with someone, like, yeah. would you, would you want to... You know, open the door and jump out of a moving vehicle, <laughs> or would you be happy to be in that? So, That's and and we apply that to to staff to clients. Like, you know, would they survive? Do they do they pass the road trip test? Yeah, and and I think it's just such an easy one. I mean, it, you, like I, I've heard other people have like you know the 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 Friday afternoon beers test. Like, would you go yes. to Friday afternoon beers with that person? We have um, that sort of our one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, and I think that's really important because. You know, our, our business, we're in the service industry. So mm. you, you've got to, like, you've got to provide a high level of service. And, a, you know, it's got to be responsive and it's got to, you know, people are trusting you with their money that, um, mm. and, and their, their hard-earned, yeah, their hard-earned dollars. And you've got to be reactive and, and responsive to that. And when you, when, when there's a clash there or when there's like, you know, when, there, when there's, you know, a, a client that you're probably not gelling with or a person that you're not gelling with, mm. you know, there's always going to be that hesitancy. Um, so it's just it's just easier if you just you just remove those barriers and you just make sure that you surround yourself with people that you do want to work with. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, mean, I say that you know it's it's incredible. We're an incredibly privileged place to be able to do that. Not all businesses can do that. And, yes. And you know, there's a time where there's a time and place for that. Like you've got to you got to earn your stripes. Like you got to work your way through it. Mm. Um, you know, hopefully. You know, you're moving towards a space, you know, if you're an agency owner or a business owner or a freelance, you're moving towards a space where you are 
like that's the that's the goal um and it doesn't happen straight away no um and you know we've got we've got heaps of experience where we've had projects where the clients you know we've worked on on rebrands and and i've got an email f- you know at 11 o'clock at night from a ceo saying i don't you think what you sent through was any good um i yeah. think a college student could have done it i don't think you guys have <laughs> i don't think you're capable and um you know what you sent Jeez. through was pathetic or something like that and like <clears throat> and look we suffered through it uh, yeah. We suffered through those sorts of Must projects. Have had a bad day that person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a reflection on on him, but it's also it was a lesson. So, like, I think one of the questions was like, "What are your, you know, maybe biggest mistakes or, or challenges?" But I think one thing um, is really important in in creative is mm. to present your work, uh, and I think presented in person, like for design work, I think it's really important to present that work, be able to talk through it, and don't let other people take that and present it on. So, Interesting. you know, where, where we went wrong with, with that project going back was, you know, we sent a, a work in progress of mm. some brand identity work. We took, you know, the marketing manager and the sales director through it and they were mm. like, yeah, this is really cool. This is really cool. Their CEO was, um, you know, pushing, you know, trying to, trying to hurry, give, give them the hurry up and get like a, you know, a sneak peek sort of thing and they fought it on. Um, and you know, it's a presentation that wasn't built to be forwarded on. It wasn't designed to be forwarded on. It was designed to be presented in person and talked through. Mm. So it was very conceptual, some of it. And and that was a mistake on us, and that was a mistake on the client. Um, but I would have loved to have, you know, heaps of money in the bank. Got that email and turned around and going, you know what? I don't I don't need this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like here's here's a refund and yeah, all the best. Yeah, because I, I and and for me that's like a bit of a. a, a you know, a frustration or, a, you know, I look back at that and I'm like, oh, I wish I handled that differently in terms of, you know, really stuck up for us and, and the agency. Yeah. Um, but I sort of just had to wear it on, you know, take it on the chin. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's funny, like, those are the things you learn in business that, you know, like, you got to treat people with respect. It doesn't matter if, um, if you're a, you know, a small young agency and, and you're working with a bigger client, um, you got to be able to stick up for yourself and, and, and like, stand behind what you've, what you've put, you know, forward. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, well, it comes, like, into that, it comes into um, you've got to be proud of the work you're producing <coughs> and then ba- be able to back it at the same yeah. time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, like, going back, like, that was our mistake. Like, we presented work. We, we, we allowed our work to be forwarded on. Yes, um, yeah. And, and it wasn't in a, in a format that, that was ready to be forwarded on. Like, mm. it was, too, it was too, too early on. Like, so, I think... Um, as creatives, like it's really important that you have a process and you stick to that. Yeah. You actually have you have principles or you have um, uh, policies. You know, mm. policies are great. Blair Ends talks about policies. You can hide behind policies. Yeah. So you can say, look, it's our. Someone says, oh, can you forward on that presentation or can you forward it on? I want to forward it to my boss. And you go, oh, look, unfortunately, we just have a policy where we have to present. You know, we present the initial concept in person. Mm. Um, and you can just hide behind that policy. Like, it doesn't have to be me saying it. It's like, yeah. oh, no, it's our policy. So, um, I haven't heard you know, of that another, another thing is, like, you know, like, when putting quotes forward, um, yeah. you know, it doesn't take, like, it's not, a, it's not too much to ask um, for someone to jump on a Zoom call and let you walk them through a proposal. Yes. So, you can say, you know, we have a policy where we present all prices in person yeah. uh, or, or via a call. Yeah. You know, it's so easy as an agency yeah. owner to just be like, send. Yeah. And then it's like, oh. Hope they hope they sign off on that, and it's just like <laughs> such a cop out. Like I've done it; I'm so guilty of it. Um, but I'm really strict nowadays. Is that like if someone wants me to write a proposal, like mm. that's that's you know time out of my day, and I'm not in the business of writing proposals. Like mm. we, you know, we're, we're busy with client work who have engaged us. Like new clients are awesome, and it's yeah. awesome to bring on new work. But I don't want to sit there and, and do business development, like, or just in the in the business of writing proposals. Yeah. So if someone's yeah. not if someone's not willing to take fifteen minutes of their time to sit through, like, here's our approach, here's the scope of work, here's how we're, here's how we're going to tackle it, mm. they're probably not going to sign off on it anyway. And especially when we're talking about projects anywhere from like ten to a hundred grand, yeah. Like you- want to better sit down and yeah, yeah. spend 15 minutes yeah. going through that or yeah. more. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not an online yeah. store. Like, this is a, a high-level strategic project. This is a, you know, this is a six-month engagement. Mm. Like, give it, give it the um, respect it sort of deserves, you know, yes. from, from our perspective, but also from the client's perspective. So that's another sort of policy or lesson that we've learned is mm. that um, 
you know, you've got to you've got to respect the sales process and and give it time and and build in those steps. Yeah. Um, as opposed to someone asks for a quote, you go, yeah, cool, and you run away and you you type it up and you fire it off, and then you just sit and wait and you hope and you're like, mate, that's probably not going to yield anything. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting because there's. Um, look, I, I highly encourage viewers to try that, any agency owners out there, because it makes a lot of sense because it, it actually gives you an excuse for a follow-up touch point mm. as well in that, in that yeah. respect. Um, another thing that um, was interesting to me, and I can't remember where I read this, I read this somewhere, um, and we, we apply it well, is what you said before about we're not in the business of writing proposals. Proposals are not the sales tool mm. proposals are the contract yeah the sales done before the proposals yeah. sent. yeah right? like is that the similar with yeah definitely guys? i mean like i don't have a creds deck i don't have like we don't have a agency creds deck not a cap uh, statement no no no, no. we wow. don't well, yeah. well it's just like mate like it should be on the website like it's, yeah. it's on your website they've done the research if they're calling you mm. like someone's already done that research they've already got the you know it might be a word of ra- mouth referral or a uh, recommendation or they've found you on a listing you know a listing site like clutch or something like that mm. they've found your business they've gone to your website they've done the due diligence and then they call you in a book a meeting like for me to sit down and go, oh, this is us and this is what we do and these are the awards we've won and this is the projects we've won. It's like, man, like so much about us. Mm. When it's like, what's everyone's favourite topic? It's like themselves. I mean, here I am talking on a podcast. <laughs> um, but like, you know, you, you want that client to basically sit down and tell you about their story, tell you about their problem, tell you about their business. Yeah. And you should just be sitting there interviewing them like yeah one of the things you know, I, you know in 2020 like going through the covid lockdowns i actually did a podcast and oh, you know, yeah. recorded 28 episodes and, oh, and what i what i learned from that was like how to actually interview and, and talk to people and and go deep on on different topics and i mean you'll you'll gain like such good experiences from doing it as well like you're mm. obviously smashing it but um, Thanks, man. um <laughs> But with clients now or new clients, I try to take that idea of like, imagine if I was interviewing them for a podcast. So like, what can I learn oh. about their business? And then another thing is like how, you know, learn about their business as if you were going to invest in it. So like you're asking yes. like proper questions rather than like you're, you're asking deep sort of long-term, you know, strategic questions. You know, a great one Blair Enns has is like the three-year uh, the three year question. So it's like, hey, Will, um, so say you came in and you were going to talk about branding with us and you go, mm. okay, cool. Like, okay, so we talked about the project, we talked about the requirements. I go, mate, like, imagine you and I are sitting down, we're having coffee three years from now. We've mm. done the project, it's gone awesome. What's happened? And it's getting them to <laughs> picture themselves in that desired future state. We do and that, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and and, yeah, and so yeah. they tell you and they go, oh, you know, we've done this, we've done that. And it's funny because I used to ask this question, but I used to just leave out a key, pr- a key part, which is, we've done this project together and it's gone well. <laughs> okay. I've just said like, or I've just said, imagine three years from now, we've sat down, we're having coffee. Uh, your business is going really well. Tell me what's happened. Yeah, And, and okay. like, the key thing is like, you've got to put, put the two together. It's like, we've done this together. We've worked on this together. Yes. Um, yeah. And you're getting that person to talk about their sort of desired future state. And they tell you some really good things. Another mm. good one is like, you know, what? Um, one that Cos, uh, my old boss told me, and he used to ask everyone this, is like, what keeps you up at night? And, and for a business question. owner, um, you know, that's a really key question because, you know, if you're asking me that on certain things, you know, it might be, it might be staffing or it might be like, you know, resourcing, it mm, might be like cash, cash flow. flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it could be, you know, we've all got that, like that, that ping in the back of our head as a business owner, a small business owner of like, you know, I've got, I know what the next two projects are. Yeah. But what are the ones after that sort of thing? Yeah. So it's like that, that you know, that longer term sales funnel. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that sometimes keeps people up at night. Um, it could be, you know, we're going for this tender and, you know, a client's got a tender out, uh, you know, we're the incumbent and we don't know who, who we're up against sort of thing. Mm. Um, so, and so all, yeah. All of those questions, I'm about to say, are great questions to ask. Like, you know, not one of those questions is a standalone. It's more like an all-encompassing. Yeah. Because, like, like, how we shape that first question you were saying is, you know, what does success look like if we're sitting down for a beer? Like, yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, and but you've got to you got to tie it to like, we've done this project together. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's three years now. We've worked together on this project. What's happened? Like, what what is what is what does it look like? Yeah. Um, because you got to put yourself in there as well. But um, subtle implementation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plant, <laughs> plant that seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Look, honestly, this is 
been such a free flowing. I haven't even looked at the questions. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I've got to double check now and make sure we've covered what we need to cover. Um, we've definitely ticked off um, managing creative teams. Um, client relationships, I think we've done really well on as well. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, we do well in generally, right? But <laughs> um, external stakeholders, definitely with freelancers, yep. um, we've totally touched on. Uh, biggest mistake. Now, you did mention. Oh, I think. I think. That. Yeah, probably. Probably not present. Like, probably a few times where we've, we've taken on projects where, where either the not you know they're not we're not the right fit mm. or. Um, we've worked for someone who perhaps isn't at a stage where they need our types of services. Like they yeah. probably don't understand their business well enough to to create a really strong brief together to brand it. Yeah. Um, and also hiring, like you know, like potentially, like we've hired, we've 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 got great employees, and I look back at the employees that have worked with us and have moved on, and I still really think fondly of them. But there's been times where we've been, you know, there's times where we we used to take ages to hire people, you know, put people on freelance and then put them on, you know, a contract or that sort of thing. And then there's other times where I've, I've met with someone, they've interviewed really well, um, they've come in for a week trial and then I've put them on a, a you know, I've, I've employed them. Yeah, right. Um, and it just hasn't worked out. Like, you know, you I, don't, I think you need a longer time. And mm. I, of course that's where you're like, your three month probation period is, is right. But mm. I think for, for our type of work, it's, it is it's quite common to have a freelancer come on board um, you know, and work work that way, mm. and you can do that for a month before you employ someone. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's different at the moment because obviously the job market's pretty hot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just think sometimes we're we're so you know, there's that um, old adage of like slow to hire, fast to fire sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but but I really think that is is a key thing is like making sure that you surround yourself with the right people. Um, you know, freelancers is okay to be a bit bit more ad hoc with but um mm. but when you're employing bring people into the business because there's a lot of cost to the business to bring someone on full time 100 percent. well you've um, got to pay all things like super and, and all the rest and but but also also too. also the um the onboarding uh yes. you know bringing someone into the culture taking time to really like really bring them into the vision and share that with them and then and then you're sharing a lot of um you know valuable insights and and mm. and sort of like you know a bit of the secret sauce behind the thing not that we're you know do anything that's that remarkably different to everyone else mm. but but you're still you're, you're still sort of welcoming them into your Shouldn't home. Shouldn't have said that. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're all we're pretty open here so um but yeah that would be that would be probably my my um I oh, like yeah things things that I look back on and probably do a little bit differently. Yeah, well the hiring one's very interesting too cuz you know like I, I personally know and obviously we are a small agency um comparatively to the market and I know other small agencies and and the people make the agency so yeah. it's literally make or break yeah and it's a it's the biggest decision i would say you probably make as an agency owner is the people you take on yeah definitely um yeah because yeah. well, i mean they, they they become the face of the brand so yeah um so yeah it, it, it's a really key thing yeah shout out sam and jacob <laughs> by the way you're the face of the brand now <laughs> hey yeah oh yeah that's right Paris too damn um Dude, obviously we talked about failures. Biggest success? Uh, <laughs> um, You're allowed to brag here. Yeah, way, no, uh, mate. Like, there's a few projects I really, I really look at and and get pretty excited about. Mm. Um, so there's a there's a company we did a brand for a few years ago, and. Um, and they turn prickly pear cactus. Oh, I saw this one yeah, into it's um epic. into into biogas basically so they they grow th so they're based in south africa and and yeah. there's the nopal cactus which is a, a prickly pear cactus um and and they they grow these big sort of cactus plants and then they harvest them and they put them through like a ingester and convert the cactus into wow. um into sort of a, a a natural gas um so basically turning plant into to biofuel um Crazy. and we we came up with a brand for them um so obviously they they create energy out of nothing or in the desert um and mm. we named them barren energy um cool. so and and the tagline for that was the future is cactus um cool. which which i you know is, is a fun one because you know in australia obviously cactus means like 
fucked. So um, to say, <laughs> I that, didn't know that. Yeah, like if something's <laughs> cactus, like that's like the old Australian <laughs> slang. It's like, oh mate, it's she's cactus, like she's she's busted, sort of thing, or like it's it's broken. Um, <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah. Right. So okay. and and it was funny because we're presenting this this brand and 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 a nice little sort of hidden thing was the the uh, the owner or the founder. Mm. His last name was Barham. So it was like Baron. So it was nice. a, a nod to to his last name as the as the founder, but also like Baron, as in Baron Wasteland, Baron Energy, mm. um, and mate, like cr- presenting the brand was really fun because it was a team of mainly um, engineers and all based in uh, you know, a lot of them were based in South Africa. There was a few a team in Australia as well. English so speaking, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So we're presenting this um we're presenting this brand, and we're presenting the logo, and the logo is like a pink cartoon cactus yes um and and we're presenting on zoom and they're like but it's pink I'm like yeah <laughs> it's super different and it like it's intentionally different it was a disruptor type brand um mm. and you know you go into the green category like green or sustainability category and it's just it's so greenwashed it's everything's green like little sprouty leaf um it all looks the same so mm. to be really radically different um and we had a lot of fun with it um, and you know, really cool, really cool copywriting. Worked with Ash on some of the copy, which is fun. So nice. you know, really, really like strong, um, strong messaging, and and they're smashing it. So like looking at the work that they're doing. So they've got they've got you know hundred acre farms over in South Africa now, where they're wow. where they're utilizing the the cactus to to do oil and different um, you know like spin off products from it. Um, so that that to me is a is a like a, a nice. Yeah, a really a real highlight in terms of seeing seeing something from concept to to execution and and seeing that company grow. Mm. Um, there's other ones that you know. There's plenty of clients that I look at, and I, you know, for me, a really big thing. Like I worked with a um, I worked with a clinical psychologist years ago called uh, Megan Fry. She was actually one of my first guests on on my podcast. Oh, cool. Um, and and we did her brand. So she's the cousin of our foundation client. So our foundation client, Simon, has referred, like there's a family tree of, of our clients that all come from him. Like he's, yeah, been, right. he's probably the, the biggest, you know, the most instrumental force. Shout and, out in, Simon. Yeah, in, in our <laughs> business's growth. But, um, but yeah, so we, we, we did a brand for Megan and, and we're doing, you know, it was one person um, psychology practice up in, in Board Hills and North Brisbane. Oh, yeah. And, and, one of the things I've really enjoyed is just seeing her growth. So she's gone from one person to like eight practicing psychologists now wow. and just seeing like a small business grow. And, and we only find out about it because it's, you know, an email, hey, Dan, we need some new business cards or we need you to add someone to the website. Yeah. But I, like, I take re- really great pride and like, and just enjoyment, like just seeing a, a company, you know, someone who started mm. to, to just grow in that business really organically and, and growing in a good way. Mm. Um, so while there's like, there's big successes of seeing like, you know, we've had companies where we've done the brand for and they've listed on the ASX. Um, so wow. that's awesome. Like, that's really cool to see someone go from, you know, an exploration company to a full, you know, oil, a gas, uh, natural gas production company and, and list and, and be yeah, one of the IPO. biggest. Yeah, and, and IPO and, and be part of that journey. Mm. And that's awesome. But also to see, like, the, you know, the, someone who's gone from, from doing something for themselves to, to employing Know, eight other people. Yeah, um, I, I really enjoy seeing that sort of growth, and that's why, like, I still get really excited with what we do because we work directly with these people, directly with founders, yeah, um, and help them, you know, fall back in love with their business and 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 build something of their own. Um, cool. For me, that's really exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's in- we, so. <coughs> I guess we we have a similar thing where we are working directly with founders. Sometimes we are working with marketing directors, which mm-hmm. is a little bit um, diluted, I guess is the word, yeah. because they're not as attached as the founder. Yeah. But speaking to a founder, it's it is a totally different message. Yeah. Like you know, not that they not that the message is convoluted in the company, but yeah. just the passion and. It, it makes you more passionate. Speaking, yeah. You know, founders like, are awesome. Uh, founders yeah. are also really frustrating to work <laughs> with. Um, and like, I, I know we that. Founders I know that because I, I do that. Yeah. So like to give you an example, so like I've worked with so, I mean, worked with so many founders and like what I love about marketing directors mm. is that like 
the, the rules of engagement are so clearly defined. Yes. So like you'll get emails, you'll get briefs, yep. you'll get you'll get like timely responses. Whereas yeah. founders, it's so ad hoc. It's like you'll get a text message and then they'll send you something through Instagram and then they'll send you something like an email <laughs> and then they'll call you. And it's like all these different lines of communication. <laughs> and it's like, that's how their brain works. Yeah. And like, I, I'm going through the same thing. Like we're, we've just moved into an office over in, um, so we've got our own space, which is really exciting mm. over in the Valley. Um, and I'm working with a friend who's an interior designer and I'm like, shit, I am that annoying client. Like I'm emailing her, we've added her to like a a notion, um, database to share ideas. I think we've got a Pinterest board with her. (laughs) I'm messaging her. I've sent her something through Instagram. I've called her. I'm like, holy shit. I am like, I'm my worst nightmare. And it's like, (laughs) shout out to this interior designer. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Thanks Gemma. Um, (laughs) But, it, but it's totally the thing because that's how our minds work. Like yeah. as founders, you're spinning so many different plates. You're thinking about so many different things. And quick. And, right? and yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you're like, oh shit, I've got to get that out. And, and you just want to like react and do it. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's good for us. Like we have a balance now of it's not just founders. Like it's really hard to service if all your clients are founders mm. uh, or fellow fellow founders sort of thing. It's really hard to service that. So we have a mix of, of, of you know, well-established businesses who do have marketing departments, who do have marketing managers that work with us. Change and that gives you, yeah. And that gives you a bit of breathing space because it gives yeah. you someone who, who works to a timeline, who, who follows that. Mm. Um, and, and it's about having a good mix of clients in that space as opposed to, you know, all type A personalities who are just like, you know, go, go, go. Um, and then radio silence for three months. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then, I mean, another thing, like, if you're going to let me brag about stuff. Um, <laughs> no, no, another thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So one of, my, one of my best mates from school, uh, a guy called Joel Brilliant, and I started a coffee business a few years ago. Uh, which I've is met Joel. Real coffee, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, nice. I've met him uh, at Bopple. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I yeah, so he works at Bopple. Angus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so Joel and I um, started a freeze-dried specialty coffee business called Brill. Um, and we've been going for a few years and we've had it stocked in a, a few cool concept stores down in Melbourne. We've done some really, you know, we've got an e-commerce site. Um, awesome. And we've also built some really cool brand assets and, and packaging and, and it's actually gone on to, to win some design awards, which is great for DSR. Yeah. Um, so it's great for our business, but also for me and Joel to, to have our own business and our own sort of, um, you know, direct-to-consumer online store. Mm. Um, for me, it's been a really good experience to understand what it's like as a business owner. Yeah, because um, you know, you're so on the other side now. Yeah, yeah, so, so, you, so yeah. you have to make decisions about things, you know, like how we're going to do packaging, um, what are we going to spend on content production, mm. what are we going to spend in subscriptions, what are we going to do for, you know, with Shopify, what add-ons are we going to do? So then when we go back to clients, I can speak firsthand like, hey, I know what it's like to spend, you know, three grand on Facebook and, and get nothing from it. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, realise after a while that, yeah, you are getting sales, but your cost per acquisition on Facebook is higher than, is, is too high. So you're actually, you know, you're, you're spending money, but you're losing money on, on each sale just to get it sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's important for any agency to have you know, almost have skin in the game and actually understand what it's like to expect money from clients for things. Yeah. Um, so if and accountability. For, yeah, of, you can sort yeah. of see that, you know, like, you know, 10 grand on something, like you, you want to see, you want to see, you want to double that. Like you don't mm. want to spend that and, and get, you know, um, fuck all back sort of thing. Like you've got, to, you've, you've got to see a return. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and we're excited because we're, we're launching roasted coffee. So it's always been instant or freeze dried. Mm. Um, and we're just about to ro- uh, launch um, like roasted beans. So Epic. yeah. Shout out Brill Coffee as yeah, well. Yeah. What is, what is the, the URL link? For oh, I think it's just brillcoffee.co. Brillcoffee.co, yeah. go yeah. search it up. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> um, one more question before we jump into Hasty Tag's question. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, any trends you're seeing for 2022? What's front of mind for you guys? <laughs> Matt, you know? so I, I, was, I was laughing at trends because mm. at, at, our, at our old agency, so we, for one year, we, we decided to write a trends report and mm. God, it was the stupidest idea because like, who are we to come up with trends? Trends are, but trends are funny. Like, I, I don't really believe in trends. Not to shit on your question, but no, no, no. Yeah. Um, there is one trend. So nostalgia is a real thing. So like, you look at like nostalgia products mm. is been big for a few years, and and Gary V, although I don't like his stuff too much, has talked about like nostalgia is is really undervalued at the moment. You look back at like retro T-shirts, um, comic books. 
things from the 90s. So like the biggest the biggest buyer base nowadays is no longer baby boomers, it's sort of the millennials. Mm. Um, so Gen X sort of got skipped over and, and it's now Gen Y or millennials. Mm. And and you're seeing things like Stranger Things is massive, yeah? Yeah. And it's like nod to the 80s, it's very retro, nostalgic. I think it's, people sometimes talk about like coming out of COVID, we want comfort food, like we want comfort things. So yeah. like a nod to our childhood, we want things that make us feel safe and comfortable. And that's why you're seeing like, you know, sports teams come out with their retro jerseys, um, so if you're if you're a company with with a bit of history, a bit of um, longevity, mm. like go out through the archives, find stuff that you've done years ago, and like bring it back to life. Show people, like take people on that journey or show them. Mm. If you've got a company that's got thirty years experience, like we did a project with a company who's got thirty years experience in in security, and we did a wine bottle, like custom wine bottle for their high value clients, where we went back through the archives and made this really beautiful sort of wine label. Cool. Um, and it was a yeah. gift. And, and, you know, sharing that story, sharing that, like, nod to, to what was in the past. Mm. Um, but, yeah, back to trends. I, I just think trends are funny. Like, I think there are principles that, that are – or, like, ideas that, that, that are sort of lifelong. Like, the idea, yes. you know, like, people talk about, oh, content is king. You know, it was like mm. – that. people have been saying that was a trend for ages. But, like, good content is, is always important. Always, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, storytelling yes. is always important. Yes. Um, well, it's – You know, like – yeah, yeah. So, so like trends are like putting fam my family stickers on the back of the car. Like who would have yeah. sat down and been like, you know, in a few years, people are going to go to a news agent and they're going to put little stick figures on the back of their car <laughs> and that's going to be really big. Like yeah. that's a trend. Yeah. Like, where's that now? Like you know, nowhere. Dude, yeah. <laughs> like, so like predicting trends is funny, but like I, I do think there are, there are principles or, or philosophies that are sort of like timeless. So mm. On on that content thing, I think I think content is really important, but I do think distribution is is more important. Yeah, um, and that's what we see, like the Netflix effect. Um, you know, there are shows that will be on Amazon Prime that do nothing, and mm. then they get picked up by Netflix, and and then they go in top ten. Mm. Um, and that's the sheer fact that like we are just so lazy. Mm. So if you can put something in front of someone and it's like right front of mind, mm. like they're going to go that. Like there are movies that do really well on Netflix that are pretty shit movies. Yeah. But, but the fact that it's on your like landing page when you log on, mm. um, they do really well. Because people don't want to decide. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just yeah. like, it's just this distribution. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what people fail to realise and fail to grasp is like they think creating something really good is enough. Mm. Um, and I think for your sort of, your work, I think that's a real opportunity is like, to work with, you know, yeah, we're going to come up with a really beautiful video and a piece of content, mm. but we're going to write a strategy on how people are going to see it. Yes, and 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 that's a great point because the distribution in our area is key. Like, yeah. you, you know, you could spend thirty grand on a, a an amazing commercial, mm. and then it's not distributed properly, and you've wasted thirty grand. Yeah, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, we're we're lucky that we have a lot of partner agencies that specialize in, um, you know implementation to tv or you know s good social campaigns like multifaceted like you know um brody bailey shout out to her for example like her company specializes in multifaceted campaigns so mm. um and they have a really good um uh you know mantra where they're trying to get consistency across all mediums yeah um which is really cool because it's, it's kind of harder to get um because when you have external stakeholders you know the film production team maybe trying to get their own aesthetic and then you've got the design agency, they might not be, can, uh, you know, collaborating, connecting as, as much as they need to. Yeah. Um, but to your point before, um, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this because I've always had this idea with trends that there's things that come and go, mm. but then as you said, there's things that are always consistent. My idea is that those things are, more consistent due to human behavior because i feel yeah. like human behavior doesn't change yeah, necessarily yeah. right yeah for sure i think there are there are things that are consistent throughout time so like mm. storytelling is is consistent like you know we've, we've, like that's how information has been shared for like throughout history sort of thing like mm. we, we're good at telling like good stories travel far and mm. and they're and then the trends are how those stories are documented or told. So like TikTok or memes are like the short form version of telling stories. Yeah. Um, and like we're descending, unfortunately we're descending into like the lowest common denominator sometimes <laughs> with that. But like, you know, good content, 
um, I think I spoke about before, like, you know, it, it rises to the top, but, mm. but then it's got to be distributed well. But like with trends, you know, you can talk about, I was taking the piss out of the My Family stickers, but that's just a form of self-expression. Yeah. Like tattoos are, are another one. Like mm. there are tattoo trends, like there are, there are different types of tattoos that are in trend or in vogue and, and out. Mm. But like the idea, like people want to express themselves differently and, and sort of be an individual. Mm. Um, and I think like what we, what people should just look at is like, what are the things, what are the types of human behaviour that people want to do? Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that we're going into probably now is this concept of like, community and, and being amongst people and being in real experiences so like you know people say oh there might be a trend for like real you know lived experience i got a friend who um some mates who just booked out haggleston island in like the great barrier reef yeah, um, and it's like 10 grand a night to book out a secluded island yeah a few friends removed they're not my friends they're ballers but yeah um, <laughs> they're ballers <laughs> ballers yeah, yeah. but like you know, that, that's what people want. People want these, like, ridiculous out there experiences these days and they're yeah. willing to pay for it. Um, is this, like, super luxe holiday experiences or, you know, that's why, like, um, you know, those, like, sleep, like, um, pure pods are, are big or, like, just things like that. Like, so people, you know, that's not new. Mm. Like, the idea of, like, bragging about your holiday is not new, but, mm. like, it's just, like, you know, people were just moving into a space where it's, like, what can I, what can I do that sets me apart from the rest and... and like you know glows glows the grid up yeah, sort of thing <laughs> yeah. you know, like, how can i brag about what i'm doing but um yeah. but yeah i think I, I i don't know i don't know where i'm going with that one but yeah <laughs> oh, one, one thing i will say is like fucking yeah. like what's terrible is like watching people just descend into trends so it's like oh so yes. like you got you know if you want to get if you want to get ahead on instagram now you got to do reels and yeah. then you've got like these professionals who are doing dances about like you know they're trying to be a lawyer <laughs> or something and then they're doing like a tiktok dance like mate like who are you like <laughs> that's gonna live on the internet forever and you're just like being an absolute fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like doing that's like like have some self-respect yeah. like, i don't know like maybe it's okay but like i i don't know I, I, it's not for me i, uh, I <laughs> look i I totally agree. I, there's a there's a line. There's <laughs> well, I just think, I just, think I just think like if you're chasing like if you're chasing like not all eyeballs are good eyeballs. Not all mm. engagement is good engagement. So like just to just to cheapen your brand image or cheapen your um, credibility to to do something that's catchy and that's going to get engagement. Like it's not it's not necessarily going to yield great results. Like mm. are you going to go to the are you going to go to the doctor who's doing, you know, dancing videos or are you going to go to the doctor who you've never seen on Instagram because why do they need to be on Instagram sort of thing? Yeah. Um, not that same for the raw. I mean, yeah, people, people do those channels really well. Different, you know, different people do really well in different channels like that. But, mm. yeah, I just, think, I just think sometimes it's a bit of a race to the bottom just to get attention. Yeah, and, and I've, I've definitely, on that, I've definitely seen creative firms of all different types capitalise on trends at the beginning mm. and, and, they're in the, in their inception and then die. Because yeah. Because they can't adapt. Yeah. Or I've seen the other way around too, where, where yeah. people have capitalized on trends and then adapted and had success, mm. but it's a fine line. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a guy on YouTube, uh, on LinkedIn, I follow who does TikTok videos and he does yeah. like the, he's like a British guy who wears like really funky, um, really like colorful cardigans and he is hilarious. Like, yeah. And he's, but it's, it, it makes sense. So he's he works in a creative agency as like head of um, uh, content, and and he does TikTok, and he does like really funny like little comedy sketches yeah. um, with different backgrounds, and he like impersonates you know different agency professionals. Um, but he nails it. But it's all on brand. Like he's doing something that's really funny, that's on trend, that fits with the the narrative that his agency is trying to create. Yeah, you know, like right. we do, we do. Um, creative advertising we do and we specialize in things like tiktok and stuff like that so it makes sense mm. what i'd be looking for is just consistency of like you know like you know like is it do you do you have a do you have a reason for being there mm. um if not like being quirky and being out there is not necessarily a good thing yes like it's it's fun to have a personality but like do you want um you know do you want the surgeon that you're going to see doing you know tiktok dances <laughs> Um, and <laughs> like, like, do they need to be doing the that? Specialist, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I totally agree. Um, so before we wrap up, I wanted to do a quick hasty takes question round with you. Quick hasty takes. I think that's <coughs> that cancels each other out. That's hasty right. takes question round. That's all right. So I'm going to fire some questions at you. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't prepped you really okay. at all. <laughs> and that's okay if you don't have an answer. Yeah, to. yeah, sure. Yeah. But let's just see how fast we can smash through these. All right. <clears throat> 
If you were to appoint a president of the internet, who would it be? And why, actually? Uh, do you know what? I, I like Russell Brand. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. so Russell Brand. Russell Coit. No, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind Russell Coit, actually. No, <laughs> Russell Brand does. Um, he, walks the, he walks a really fine line between, um, I don't want to say conspiracy theorist, but like he, 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 he questions a lot and he does mm. lots of long form content on, on, online. He's got like 4 million subscribers on YouTube. I don't watch all of his stuff, and I, but I used to read his books and I follow his, his sort of um, career path. But I think he's, he just seems like a very kind and open um, and understanding and compassionate person. Mm. And I think he's, he's willing to see both sides of an argument and he's actually had some really good podcasts. He did a podcast with Brene Brown, which was awesome. Yeah, right. Um, and he's he's very, he's I mean, he's hilarious, mm. and he, he's 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 got a, like a really cunning wit. Um, but I think he's kind and compassionate and mm. open, um, and he's open to new ideas and he's open to sharing different and seeing different perspectives. This is the actor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. So like, ex, you know, for, former drug addict. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was guy. on like MTV and then got into Hollywood, married Katy Perry, and then. You know, became a bit of a recluse and now has his own sort of like YouTube channel and does stand up and stuff like that. Yeah, I, th- I think he's like just, yeah, really, really switched on guy. Yeah, right. I haven't, I didn't know any of that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if you watch his videos, like he's got, you know, lots of different videos and different stances on different things. But, um, yeah. I don't know, I think he's a pretty, pretty rational person who's, um, yeah. who's willing to see both sides of an argument and, and take time to consider it. It's funny because he's he's like one of those dudes who you see him in the movies and he's like it's a complete like pissed yeah up. yeah oh man I, like him and um uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall yes, is so I'm good saying. and like um the and then star. get him, and then get him to the Greek yeah as um <laughs> Aldous Snow or something it's such Snow. a good such a good character man so funny and it crossed between the two movies That's yeah yeah really so like. good yeah. Uh, all right all right next question if you were put in charge of creating a brand new global holiday. What would you name it and how would it be celebrated? <laughs> These are tough questions. These are actually big ones. What would be the holiday? The Dan Rao Day. Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe I'm sentimental because my parents are overseas and I miss them. Um, and, and I just dropped my daughter at her grandma's today. But right. maybe like a grandparents day okay. where like everyone or, or like grandparents or, or, or old people. They're not that old. But, you know, like where you go and spend time with, with – the older generation of your family yeah. without the pressures of like Christmas. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. like Christmas is so like high, uh, like uh, high stakes, you know, yeah. like don't, don't, don't burn the turkey, get the right <laughs> present sort of thing. And it's like, it's, it's just stressful and overwhelming. Like yeah. if you had a day where you basically spent time with family um, that removed those like, those external pressures mm. um, and, and spent time with people you care about, I think that would be a day. Nice. It sounds well, really like softy, but yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Oh, let's day? call it Grandparents Day. Grandparents Day, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I'm locking yeah. that in. What uh, what song would you play if you were handed the orcs at a party? Oh man, the first De- song, Darude Sandstorm. <laughs> depends, <laughs> depends, on my, depends, like what what the vibe was. It'd be either it'd be either Sandstorm. <clears throat> I used to love um, Michael Jackson's "Don't Stop Till You Get Enough" as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, got like yeah. a really good like intro, and then yeah, it's very very good. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, one of those two. No, I so yeah. like it. I would come to that party, I think. <laughs> With Darude Sandstorm played right after Michael Jackson. I think Darude Sandstorm was like the encore, like what you leave on. <laughs> yeah. It's an eclectic mix. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like it. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Now, we've, I've, had, I've asked this question before and there's been definitely a few interesting answers, so I'm, I'm very open. Oh, man, a few years ago, I went to um, Hidden Spices Hidden Vale and they have a yeah. pretty interesting sort of degustation menu. Um, I'm gluten and dairy free, so I was like giving them my my dietary requirements, mm. um, and I did have I did, I think I had emu tartare, so like raw emu. I think that was one of them, and then the other thing was just like a leaf, and I swear it was just like a leaf from the garden. That gave me. <laughs> I reckon it's a stitch up. I reckon they're like, like this guy's this guy's gluten and dairy free. What are we gonna give him? Oh mate, just give him a leaf. Just pick one from yeah, the yeah. garden. <laughs> so probably probably that. <laughs> no, I think the emu, the, the raw <laughs> emu. <clears throat> Was was probably probably that yeah raw like it was it was good it's just like yeah yeah really <clears throat> I've had ostrich as well I had an ostrich steak and um uh, I went to, I went to a restaurant in Glasgow with a mate who was over there studying and he he went to this really fancy restaurant and had an ostrich steak yeah and that was really good there's something about you and bird meat bird meat yeah <laughs> I'm, af- I'm, af- I'm afraid of birds so maybe it's like me me taking out that um <laughs> that taking out that fear <laughs> yeah I can yeah. conquer this <laughs> yeah I'm I'm scared of you living but dead I will eat you. <laughs> 
Oh, awesome. Who's um who's the most interesting person you've ever met? <clears throat> um I met Todd Sampson from okay. he's on Gruen and he did the redefine your brain redesign, redesign your brain. Uh so Todd Sampson's ex Leo Burnett or Saatchi and Saatchi creative director. Uh, yeah, yeah. And okay. he was also I think he's also on the board of Qantas. Um he's on the Gruen uh planet or Gruen transfer. Mm. Um, as one of the panelists, cool. and he was really interesting. So he's done really cool things where he, you know, he went to <clears throat> he climbed he climbed a mountain blindfolded. He walked a tightrope across two buildings. He went and trained <laughs> trained in the Amazon with like the French legionnaires. Um, so he's just done some really extreme things. He's gone to you know uh, he's gone to like very remote tribes in Africa and done you know like. Um, like rites of passage, passage things and stuff wow. like that. Like, so he was he was awesome to me, and he was just one of those people that you just sit and you just listen to him talk for hours, and you just be like enthralled. Yeah, yeah. that's epic. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and last one, if you could be in any movie, what would it be? And also to add on to that, <coughs> what character would you be? <laughs> um. I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say Leo and Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, but no, no. I was thinking that. But, I was like, is he no, gonna say no, that? No, oh my no god! Way. No way! No way! No, <laughs> no. That's a, I mean, amazing movie, but no. Um, <laughs> or Ryan Gosling in uh, The Big Short. That's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, oh man, younger me would have just wanted to be like. Will Smith in Bad Boys, I reckon. Like, really? I just thought he was the coolest dude. Like, drove that like uh, Porsche 911 Carrera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But not Will Smith anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, a bit of a, he's a bit of a douche. Um, <laughs> so, so um, I don't know. Russell Crowe and Gladiator is pretty badass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, apart from the whole like losing your family. Yeah, and, and then like dying. Yeah, <laughs> like, so, but, but like for the epic too. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, maybe, 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 um, maybe one of the guys from Avatar. <laughs> oh, good one too. Hey, and that a new one's coming out soon, right? Yeah, that's like yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't I'm know. gonna lock in Russell Crowe though. Yeah, I okay, think that's yeah. a good one. That's a good answer to have. I like it. Well, um, it was awesome to have you on today. Thanks Mate, for thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Oh, this is the handshake. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Make sure. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. And um, yeah, dude, it's been awesome. Cheers, Will. Thanks, mate. Thanks for jumping onto this episode of the Will's Eye podcast. To follow our journey, you can search at Will's Eye on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. To inquire with us, visit our website at www.willseyeproductions.com. Have a question you want us to answer on the show? Simply comment on any one of our social media posts or reach out at inquiry at willseyeproductions.com. <laughs>